Today I'm going to talk about the method statistics and the exceptional method run features that are available in JProfiler. Below the screencast you can see a sample program that I'm going to profile right now. I'm going to start CPU recording right from the beginning and I'll switch to the call tree view. And when you look at the call tree you see that it is very simple. In a real world situation there will be a lot more nodes in the call tree. But here we really want to make a point. Uh, we don't want to be distracted by the semantics of large frameworks and uh, we want to produce a simple situation where we can argue about what the method statistics and exceptional method runs do. So what is the point here? Um, you have a critical task method that is invoked very frequently and it should complete quickly, let's say within 10 milliseconds. Uh, somebody has found out that sometimes it doesn't complete within 10 milliseconds, but that it takes far longer to complete, like, like 50 milliseconds or even longer. Uh, and your task is now to find out uh, who the culprit is, uh, what the cause of these slow method invocations are. And in accumulated view, like the call tree or the hotspots view, it is very difficult to do that because the infrequent slow invocations are, are drowned out by the frequent fast invocations. So your first question would probably be what, what is the distribution of um, the invocation times? How many fast invocations are there? How many slow invocations are there and how are they distributed? And that's where the method statistics view comes in. So let's switch to the method statistics view. Method statistics is recorded separately from uh, CPU data because it creates additional overhead. This is not a live view, so data is, is shown after we stop recording. And uh, here we see the critical task method. The columns in the table show all sorts of statistical information for the recorded methods. Most interesting in this context is the outlier coefficient which is higher the more distant outliers are from the median invocation time. Once we select the critical task method, we see a distribution of invocation times in this graph in the lower part of the view. And indeed, we see two spikes, one for the fast running invocations and, and one for the slow invocations. And this is a, a, a logarithmical um, view and if we switch to a, a linear vertical axis, we would not even see uh, the slow invocations because there are so few compared uh, to the fast invocations. So what we would really like to do is to analyze the slow method invocations separately from the fast invocations and uh, see their call tree separately from the merged call tree of all invocations. How do we do that? We right-click the critical task method and add it as an exceptional method. Uh, this will change the profiling settings and when we change the profiling settings all recorded data like the method statistics is discarded. If we switch back to the call tree now we see that the critical task method has been split and that the slowest invocations have a separate node in the call tree. There is a, a merge node for all the remaining invocations. If we open the slowest node here, we see that uh, it calls the impl1 method. In the merge node, uh, this is not uh, obvious. The impl1 method does not dominate here. The impl2 method dominates. So uh, this is true for all the other slowest method invocations. Um, they all call the impl1 method. So uh, in this way we have found the cause of the slowness. Uh, why are there just five um, nodes for the slowest method invocations? This is configurable in the session settings. Go to the profiling settings and uh, activate the CPU profiling tab here and you can see there is um, a spinner uh, for the maximum number of separately recorded method runs, which is uh, set to 5 by default. Uh, another note on configuration, the exceptional methods are saved in the filter settings 
on the exceptional methods tab here you can delete these methods or um, add additional exceptional methods.